I am uh, so thankful that you are all here to to share this uh, special event with uh, with Ellie and in uh, proud of several things. It's, uh, the the journey that that, uh, that you're on 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 the process of taking and the words brought you to. It's been a pleasure. It's been my privilege to get. I'm actually very privileged to be here and get to participate in this tonight, Ellie, and I'm, I'm, I'm extremely uh, grateful to you because there are people here who have been a much larger part of this journey than I have, and uh, um, it's good to have them, good to have all you guys with us and, and to share in this. Uh, and it's so incredibly appropriate that this is also your birthday and, and that... Uh, And you're old enough to get your driver's license now, right? <laughs> Let's pray together. God, I am indeed grateful that you have brought us to this place tonight. I'm, I'm thankful for every person in this room here. I'm, I'm thankful for Ellie, and, and it's, just been, it's just been a pleasure to watch what you're doing in here. And I'm so privileged to, to get to get to be a part of a witness that. I'm thankful for the, the friends and, and family members that she's brought here. And uh, Father, this we know that that this is this is a marker. And we know that we have a responsibility. All of us who choose to be here have a responsibility to help her uh, to continue in in her spiritual growth. Um, help us to be about that business. And help us always to, to love like you love. Most of all, I'm thankful for Christ who came, gave us an example of what it means to live and, and to love. And uh, left us with this ordinance. Uh, be a part of his church. And I'm thankful and grateful in his name we pray. Amen. Tonight, you're not, you're not being baptized into church membership. That's a foreign concept of Scripture. Um, you are are being brought in into Christ, and it is a, it is a wonderful thing that uh, that we share together. And uh, just kind of kick this off, Hannah. You've got a few scriptures that you want to read, so why don't you do that? John three three. In reply, Jesus declared, "I tell you the truth: No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again." Romans 6, 3 through 7. Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Galatians 3:27. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. 1 Peter 3:21. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Galatians 2, 20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Two quick stories. One of them comes early in, in the uh, book of Acts. Well, actually not as early as the second one I'm gonna tell you. But the Bible tells us about the story of an Ethiopian official who was traveling from Jerusalem back to his hometown in, in Ethiopia. And he was, he was reading passages from the Old Testament. And God took Philip, who at the time was, was just one of the guys. And he took Philip and he put him right there in the right place at the right time. And so Philip came up to this chariot that this guy was riding in and, and he says, what you doing? And the guy says, well, I'm reading this Bible. 
And Philip says, do you understand it? The guy says, no, it's King James. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's not what he said. He, but he did say, I don't, under, I don't understand it. And uh, he said, I, I need somebody to explain it to me. And so the Bible tells us that Philip then started explaining all about how history had unfolded and was pointing to Jesus. And it, somewhere in that conversation, he talked to him about what it meant to come to Christ. And as they went over water somewhere, the, the Ethiopian says, you know, here's some water, why can't I be baptized right here? And Philip said, you know what? If you believe, there's no reason not to. And so the Bible tells us that they went down into the water and he baptized him at that particular point in time and then he went on his way. Bob says he went on his way rejoicing. The other story happens in the second chapter of the book of Acts. And that is when the church, as we know it, is, is just beginning. And it's beginning right there in Jerusalem where Jesus had been crucified and had been raised from the dead. And the apostles then, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, were, were preaching sermons. Miraculous things were taking place and, and people were understanding what they were talking about. Over the course of the sermons that they heard, one of them stood out, and that was when Peter told him all about Jesus. And he said, this Jesus who you crucified, he's both Lord and God. And the Bible says at that point, the people were pricked to their heart. And they said, well, what do we need to do? And that's when Peter said, here's what you need to do. You need to repent, and you need to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter went on to say, I said, no one-time thing. This promise is going to be for you, it's going to be for your children, and it's going to be all for all who are far. That's the promise that we get to live under. Same. And it's a beautiful promise that we have. And you have, you have chosen to take this, this, this step in, 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 your, in your life as well. And Ellie, I just want to ask you one question. Who do you believe that Jesus is? Well, I did some math on this. <laughs> now. Do I need to sit down? No. <laughs> now, uh, there are many scriptures that say that Jesus is Lord, Father in Son, and Son in Father. So, of course, Jesus is Lord. And then there are also scriptures that say that God is love. So I believe that Jesus is love. And he's loved me more nice. than anything that I've ever experienced and that I could ever understand. And he saved my life. Nice. Ask that question because one day that question was asked by Jesus to his followers. And he said, I, I want you to tell me what you think about me. And they said, well, there are out, people out there who are saying that you are, are one of the prophets come back to life or John the Baptist come back or Elijah or somebody like that. And Jesus said, I don't really care what they say. I want to know what you think. And Peter said, I believe that you're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, Peter, but only the Holy Spirit. And so you've come to accept, you've come to accept Christ as, as your Lord and Savior. I love the, the terminology. And I love the fact that you've, you've, you've asked these people to be here because so often people come and they say, well, can we do it in the middle of the night when nobody's looking and those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> and just the, just the joy that it gave me as your pastor to be able to, to announce to people, say, hey, hey, come and share this time with Ellie. And Eleanor French, because you have stated your belief with, with your heart and with your mouth that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, it is my privilege to <laughs> baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.